the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> on King! On you, Husky! <laughs> King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. <laughs> Tom Wayne and his sister Mary live several miles north of Harper City. Inside their cabin, three people faced each other, their voices sharp and tense. You can save your breath, Malloy. I'm not selling out. Oh, I don't know what you've got against me. <laughs> Never done you any harm. Forget it. I think you're making a mistake, Tom. I'll make that 30000 Tell you I'm not interested at any price. If you weren't so stubborn, Tom Wayne, you'd see Bert's trying to do you a favor. I wouldn't put it that way. Of course, I wouldn't make every man an offer like that. Oh, Bert, I know you're just... He's just trying to buy out one of the richest loads in the Yukon before we get a chance to turn over the gold. He's not doing anyone a favor except himself. Tom. You haven't found a nugget in the mine since you bought it. That's no sign gold isn't there. Suit yourself, Tom. You don't have to worry on that, Count Malloy. I aim to. Right now, I think I'll go outside. At least I won't see any skunks in shoes out there. Well You mustn't take Tom too seriously, Bert <laughs> Certainly doesn't think much of me Oh, that's just Tom's way Why, there's no more loyal friend on this earth than Tom If he likes you And he doesn't like me He doesn't know you That's why he feels as he does well, I don't care how he feels about me, Mary As long as you don't feel the same way you know very well I wouldn't take your part against Tom's for one minute if I didn't believe in you. I know. It makes me feel like the, the luckiest man in the world. Oh, if only your brother... Oh, well. No. Now, don't let that worry you, Bert. I'll talk to Tom tonight and try to persuade him differently. Will you? Yes. Then perhaps I'd better tell him about us. No, no, you let me do that. He... He won't get as excited if I tell him. Well, in that case, I'll head for the city and see you tomorrow. Uh, if I may. You'll stay out of the cafe, Bert. Listen, Mary. I gave you my word, didn't I? From now on, I'm taking orders from you. Good night. Good night, Bert. <laughs> Late that night, as Mary cleaned the supper dishes from the table, Tom reached for his pipe. Supper had been a quiet meal. The strong feeling Tom expressed against Bert Malloy separated them as completely as a wall. Tom. Huh? Tom, I... I want to talk to you. Yes, I... I guess I want to talk to you, too. Oh, your pipe. Watch those ashes. Oh, forgot. Sorry. Why don't you like Bert? Listen... When you see a mountain lion coming up to your door, you don't open it up to let him in, do you? I feel the same way about that no-good low-down gambler. But he's changed. Not Bert Malloy. Does a leopard change his spots? I tell you, he's known in every gambling hall in the Yukon for a yellow crooked polecat. Tom, I'm going to marry Bert. And another thing, I... What'd you say? I said I'm going to marry him. Mary. I mean it. I... Oh, I wish for my sake you'd forget whatever you have against him. He's changed. I can't believe it. You can't be serious. Well, let's not quarrel about it. My sister married to Bert Malloy. I can hear it already. Every tongue in all the cafes this side of Skagway will be wagging with the news. Oh, Mary... In Harper City, Slim's Cafe attracted every thirsty miner in town. 
The men gathered around the pot-bellied stove at the far end of the room and exchanged stories and gossip, commenting on the ways of the rest of the Yukon. Yes, sir. I says Ted when he told me. I says, you don't mean it. You can't understand what a girl like Mary Wayne is seeing that scoundrel. Uh, he ain't ever amounted to a row of beans. Right below him, much have changed a lot since I saw him last. For him? <laughs> he ain't changed. He ain't likely to. Wonder what Tom thinks about it. I don't know. I'm surprised he ain't filled Malloy full of lead. He never did like him. Oh, say, here comes Sergeant Preston. What's oh, comes down for a while, Sergeant? Oh, I just came in to see you boys for a while. Well, did you hear about Mary Wayne planning to marry Bert Malloy? Mary Wayne? Yep. So he's hard to believe, ain't it? Are you sure that's him? Oh, ask any of the fellows here. It's all a mistake. Anybody wants my opinion. Hmm. I was just planning to drop out to see Mary and Tom. Appears like you better get out there then, Monty, and try to talk some sense into the girl. Ah, uh, you know how a woman is, Heb, once she gets an idea in her head. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Mary would listen to the sergeant now. Well, at least I can go out and see how much truth there is to it. I certainly hope you boys are wrong. Well, hope for Mary's sake we are too, but I don't know. If you hear anything about it, let us know over there. <laughs> A short time later, on the trail toward Tom Wayne's cabin. Yeah? So what do you want me to do about it? I'm going to marry Mary Wayne. So I heard. And then with Tom Wayne out of the way, I'll own the watch for mine. <laughs> Say, now I see what you mean. <laughs> I should have known you're too smart to be serious about anything. But get this, Red. I want whatever happens to him to look like an accident. That mine will be a strike any day now. And I'm going to be the man to turn over the gold. How will I know when to get him? Yeah, that's your problem. Watch your chance, and then take it. Mush, you huskies! Mush! <laughs> Farther ahead on the trail, Sergeant Preston sighted the Wayne cabin. All right, King. <laughs> Oh, oh, you must be out. Sergeant Preston. Tom. Well, I'm glad to see you. No better than I am to see you. Seems like a long time since you've been in these parts. Too long, Tom. But then I can't call around as often as I'd like to. Well, Sergeant Preston. How nice to see you. Just stop by to say hello, Mary. How are you? Just fine. Glad to hear it. Sure you didn't stop by to try to stop me marrying Bert Malloy? Oh, I'm sorry. But everyone is so against it. I almost imagine Tom sent for you to try to talk me out of it. No, Mary. I won't say a thing about it. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't ask the sergeant here to do something I can't do myself. Uh, how is the watch fob working out, Tom? Say, I want you to see the watch fob. I tell you, that mine's going to turn up the richest strike in this part of the country in a few days. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I want you to see it right now. All right. That mine's Tom's baby, Sergeant. You bet it is. Ready? Yes, indeed. I'll see you in a few minutes. Don't be too long. We won't. If she marries that varmint, he'll break her heart. I can't stop her. You may be going about this in the wrong way. What do you mean? Mary is a headstrong girl. You can't railroad her out of a thing once she's made up her mind. You should try to expose Bert to her. Make her see him as he really is. You think so? Well, maybe you're right. Over this way a bit. This is the entrance. Well, they've got quite a bit of rock piled up here. I'm all ready to go ahead now into the real gold. You look as pleased as a boy with a new present. This means a lot to me. Now, over here. I'm going to blast through here, and that'll Tom, be... Tom, Tom, look out! Hey! Wow. They're almost pinned beneath those rocks. Hmm. Can't understand that. As long as those rocks have been there, none of them ever loosened. Unless. Unless. Uh, never mind. I was just thinking. Those things will happen, I guess. Maybe we'd better go back up to the cabin. It's a good idea. Whose sled is that? Where? Oh. Malloy again. I wonder how long he's been here. I don't relish a talk with him. We might as well get it over with. Well, hello, Preston. 
Hello, Bert. Oh, you look as if you just... As if I just what? Uh, nothing. What do you know about those rocks falling? Tom, now don't start a fight in here. What rocks? I don't know what you're talking about. Just because you don't like me, Tom, you needn't think I'm here for trouble. I, uh... I think I'll be going back to town. So soon? Yes. You're coming outside with me, Tom? Huh? Oh, sure. Uh, so long, Bye, Sergeant. Sergeant. Tom, now listen to me. I think this may be your chance to call Malloy's cards. You do as I tell you. Back inside now. I'm going back down to the mine, Mary. It's getting dark. Yes, I know. But I have some blasting to do. It's pretty dangerous, and I'll feel better if it's finished up. Need any help? No, thanks. Easy enough for an accident to happen with one man handling the job. I won't be long, Mary. I have something out on the sled I've been meaning to give you. Wait a minute. Oh, how nice. I'll wait right here. Red. Yeah? Get down to the mine. You muffed one chance to get Wayne. Now this time, see that there are no slip-ups. It's going to be blasting. Get him from behind, then set off the charge. <laughs> You'll never know what hit him. Stealthily, Red crept through the mine entrance. He saw Tom Wayne bending over a dynamite charge near a pile of rocks. With gun in hand, Red edged closer. Hey, what are you doing here? Put up your hands, Wayne. Put up my... What is this, a holdup? No, not a holdup, a blow-up. <clears throat> You're going up with that dynamite, and nobody will ever know it wasn't an accident. Nobody? You're wrong. Drop that gun, Red. Preston. Yes. You seem surprised. I didn't have nothing to do with it. It wasn't my idea. Honest, it wasn't. And whose idea was it to get me out of the way? Bert. He wants to mine. It's the truth, I tell you. Honest, it is. Come on, Tom. We'll face Bert with Red here. And a charge for attempted manslaughter. I think I hear someone coming. It must be Tom out. Well, it might be. Tom. No surprise, my lord. Not half as surprised as you're going to be. Keep those hands up, Red. Red? Huh? Well, what happened? I, I don't understand. Who is this man? Bert here can answer that one. Well, speak up, Malloy. There's nothing to say. You never saw this man before. You ain't throwing the blame for this on me. What do you mean you never saw me before? Why? Easy, Red. That's not the story we heard. You're not holding any gun on me. I'll show you. Don't let him get the gun. I already got it. Now, you listen to me. Sure, I wanted Wayne out of the way. And this time, there won't be any slip-ups. Go on, get over against the wall. All of you. Bert. You two, get over there. Not so fast. Get him, King. All right, King. That's enough, boy. I have the gun. Yes, sir. Always did say. Smartest dog in the Yukon. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I'm sorry, Mary. But it's better to have found out now. Tom will tell you the story of what happened. King and I have a job to do. Taking these two prisoners to Harper City in jail. <laughs> yes, King. The case is closed. <laughs> Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated. Brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>